Today's trying new makeup video is really dedicated to y'all, even more so than usual because in my this or that video, y'all submitted a bunch of makeup that you wanted me to compare that I did not own. And I have reasons that are irrelevant now as to why I didn't own them, because I bought them. And so I'm gonna be showing y'all among a lot of other stuff, I actually bought my proper shade in the new larger, reformulated, at least extended shade range of the Merit Minimalist Perfecting Complexion Stick. I also, I also got I might be really delicate with this, but rose metals from Anastasia. I have new blushes from Make. I have some Kaleidos. I have some Kaja. It's gonna be a fun one. Let's go ahead and jump in. Let's go ahead and jump in. It's really foggy outside, so my face is going to be very illuminated when I get close to my light and probably in the shadow when I back away, more so than usual because I'm working with almost no natural light right now. Apologies to future Khaki who's editing this video. So I'm starting with a Verdant Force Field because my, my skin is looking, mm. <laughs> Those are the words that I have for it. And what's hard is that I can't put anything on basically this bottom third of my face because my perioral dermatitis is getting worse before it gets better. Right now it's spreading. And I think it's because I've been using sort of more emollient things over here thinking that it was a safe place to put it because I have this healing zit and the moisture as my esthetician put it you know it causes it to kind of breed and spread and I was like neat cool so that's happening I'm still putting antibiotics on it and I'm still taking antibiotics but I need to just let the antibiotics be what's on there so in the interest of that, I'm just kind of priming the rest of my face with the Phytosurgeon's moisturizer. Okay, so I got the shade Silk. I don't know whether Silk was the same shade that I got last time. I don't know, but the one that I got last time was too dark. I don't think that that's too dark. I think it's actually a fantastic shade. And the thing that y'all wanted me to compare this to was like Westman Atelier and... Monica Blunder, and I don't know whether I'll be able to tell y'all definitively today my feelings on that, but hopefully this will get us part of the way there. And I'm just using this the way that I do pretty much anything else that's just kind of a singular complexion product. I'm putting it where I think that I want camouflaging coverage, but I'm not trying to establish a whole base layer of complexion product on my face. You know, I'm not trying to like put on a whole skin tint with it. Got my fairly clean Beauty Pie Seamless Foundation Buffing Brush here. Why do I feel like it's so dark over there? Y'all, I don't know. It feels like the day doesn't really count when the sun doesn't come up. But it better count, because I'm going into the city today. I'm very excited about it. If you're watching this, I'm on my way back already. But I'm going to go to an event, and I'm going to see Kelly, and then I get to hang out with Ingrid and Erica. And it's fairly warm outside, so it's not going to be the struggle that it has been in the past. <laughs> I tend to go in the very extreme temperatures. It's just kind of a running gag at this point. I went during the hottest day of the year and then I went during the coldest day of the year last year, so. Hmm. Hmm. Not sure, not sure if a brush is the right way to do this. Maybe a sponge would be better. Maybe it will warm up to my skin and look better as we put more makeup on, but like right now it's just kind of sitting there even on the spots of my face that aren't suffering from some kind of ailment. Like, look underneath my eyes. I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah, I guess it'll warm up. So yeah, I mean, a pretty minimal situation. I have found lately that brightening, like too brightening of a concealer color or a complexion color in general, does a really bad job of what I'm trying to accomplish because what it actually does is it kind of like highlights my discoloration, my hyperpigmentation and my kind of see-through under eyes. I feel like if I use something that's like <laughs> compensating, trying to actually brighten, those spots look gray instead of just kind of gently camouflaging. And so I've been going a little bit darker with everything. Even like my powder and stuff. I am in the fortunate position that a lot of brands send me kind of like my shade and then a couple of shades around it so that I can try them out. And that's been very fortunate lately. Sorry, I'm a little low key today. Like I said, I didn't sleep super well and the sun didn't come up. So this is gonna be one of the more cozy videos. Speaking of cozy, I'm gonna grab something that's on fire right now. I'm gonna do that. In a completely unexpected turn of events, Maison Margiela reached out to me 
Mason Margiela Fragrances specifically reached out to me and asked if they could send me PR. <laughs> Moi. Yeah, no, I mean, I love candles and I'm a bougie girl, but like, I just didn't see myself on their radar, okay? And I feel very like noticed by Senpai. So this is the replica by the fireplace candle. And I admit I have heard many things about this, but I had never really smelled it before. And the first time that I lit it, Mike and I were like, oh my gosh, open a window. It's so strong, it's so strong. But then somehow I got used to it. And the thing that I did while I was getting used to it was I stored it with my like my shoes and my sweaters like I didn't obviously light it in there but I just like stuck the candle in this cabinet that I store my sweaters in and stuff and then I'd be like putting my sweaters on and I was like ooh it smells like a evergreen campfire oh my gosh it's just so nice then coming in here and lighting it and even like opening the window so that I get a little bit of fresh air but then I also get this and then like walking back in here in the morning after you know I burned it yesterday for a little while it's just super lovely oh and I'm gonna light something on fire on camera that's what's about to happen I mean waste one of these just to show you but this is so cool I know you can barely see it. It's embossed with the Margiela stuff. You can barely see that, but it's matches. And like, not only am I an Aries, but I'm also a pyro. <laughs> watch, watch how delicately this happens. It hardly takes anything. It hardly takes anything. The first time I struck it, I did it way too hard and it practically exploded. <laughs> I was like, whoa! It was like really thrilling. So I have a great respect for fire. Would someone please gift this? This is like the most me I've ever been on camera right now. She's a witch! So that's what I have going right now. It's making this room extremely cozy. I cannot believe I got PR from Margiela Fragrances, so. Merci! So as expected, that had a chance while I was running my mouth to kind of warm to my skin and it looks better. It looks better. It's almost like it'd be better to just apply it with my fingers because then I'd get the warmth on both sides. And like the emollients kicked in. And the shade is great. It's really good. I'm gonna use my Charlotte Tilbury contour wand here. Mew, 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 mew. I just want this to be pretty easy today. Let me tell y'all. This Rose Metals palette, I know that again, I'm low energy and I feel like I can't <laughs> properly make a big deal out of this the way that I want to, but this Rose Metals palette, I kind of wish that I had waited. If I had known that it was coming out, I might have waited because I like it a lot better than the Nouveau palette. The Nouveau palette is good, and I'm gonna do probably, if y'all want me to, like an entire like video where I swatch them next to each other and compare them once I get my head around Rose Metals even a little bit more. But Rose Metals is what I like to call, falls into the category of beautiful mud. You know, it's up there with Pat McGrath, Divine Rose One, in the sense that like, you kind of can't go wrong. You know, you just kind of like smack it everywhere and you're like, the textures and everything are just so beautiful. And there's a unique appeal to it for people who are like a little bit pale too, because it doesn't have anything like super, super deep. And I can use it, you know, straight from the pan. So cool, yeah, a little, a little Brontour moment. In fact, Let's go a little bit more bronzer here. I'm gonna use my Westman Atelier Biscuit. I'm gonna use the BK106 for this. And just dippy dab that up into that blank spot in my hairline. When I was in art school, my lead professor that I really connected with, her name is Carrie. And I remember she would talk about like, you know, trying to get paintings ready for an opening and her stuff is pop surrealist and so it really relies on getting the eye to believe something that's an illusion you know it, there's something that's very not real she would actually like collage things and then paint them and it's it's kind of a, a leap for the like human mind to comprehend what they're looking at and i remember with some that she wasn't finished with that she knew she was not going to be able to get a certain level of detail with by the time the you know gallery opening arrived she would say okay well i just have to make sure that like everything is at the same level of detail it's not that i need to bring everything up to like you know crisp precision it's just that one thing can't be in crisp precision that makes everything else look unfinished and i apply that to the way that i think about makeup too you know it's like i want 
everything to kind of feel the same way that it felt to just gently camouflage all of my you know, perceived imperfections and, and everything like that. And then as long as there's nothing disproportionately perfected, it'll all look really like natural and intentional. Before we go in with blush or bronzer or anything, I'm going to do my eye look because A, I want to establish the eye look before I decide kind of what the undertones are that I'm gonna play with for the rest of my face, but also, <laughs> oh, the one big pitfall of this palette is just how fragile these shades are. They are very, like Hannah would call them, like arts and crafts kind of textures. When it arrived, it was a little bit like broken right here, but it had like a, an overlay. And so I was able to actually take the Merit lipstick. I don't know where it went now, but like it has a square lid on it. <laughs> I just like mushed it and it repressed those shades a little bit. It's not ideal, but it'll do the trick. I would not travel with this the way that it is right now. And also certain shades in here, I think Rose Quartz might be the only one that's this particular finish. It's like this, very, very like suede finish is what it looks like. It's hard for me to show it. I don't want them to fall out. Get it over my eyes and we should be okay. There we go. So it, it almost looks like Kierweiss Inner Glow, right? <laughs> like it has this, this ethereal, you know, slightly shimmery mauve thing to it. And it, it just falls out really badly. So I'm actually going to start with the Kaleidos Tone Activator Eye Primer. They sent this to me to go with their quads and their new eyeliners, but I think it's just like a fancy name for an eye primer basically, but it's supposed to extend wear time and make colors go on more vividly. Looks like a concealer, <laughs> like a very soupy concealer. I haven't used this yet. It's a little bit actually looks like Calamine lotion, the consistency of it but hopefully it gives enough tack to my skin. The colors don't fall out so badly because my God, is this a beautiful color story. Like it is heartbreakingly beautiful. It's worth it to me to work past maybe the shortcomings of, not even the shortcomings of the formula. It's like the, the trade-offs of the formulas. Like they're so unique in their formulation, but it also makes them really fragile and a little bit difficult to work with without them falling out. Okay, <laughs> I double swatched on the bottom because like it's actually kind of hard to see the way that I've done this. Anyway, if there's something that I want you to glean from looking at this, it's that we're actually working with three quads. They've been scrambled up in the palette, so it's actually kind of hard to recognize them. It's almost like process of elimination. You like take the purples out and then you take the greens out when you have left behind are these warm browns, but essentially, it's, it's quads, it's three quads. So we have a quad of these beautiful purples and this purple does shift a little bit towards brown. And so it kind of then bridges to like this and then that goes into these like warm, like desert sunset kind of browns. And then, you know, we have like this little bit of Patina maybe in here, but these are very much greens into pewters, right? So when I looked at these, and it's not perfect by any means, but this very much said to me, Aether Amatrine Quad, Aether Topaz Quad, and Aether Citrine Quad. Here we have Amatrine. This is definitely like, you can dupe the vibes. Like that's extremely similar. Not the same, not the same but similar. Topaz is probably the least similar, but fairly similar. And then we have Citrine. So Citrine does not go anywhere near as deep as those deep shades. So it's almost like, you know, Summer Solstice or something like that. But as far as quads are concerned, I feel like you can easily dupe the vibes of this palette if you own these quads. And it's important to recognize which parts of the Anastasia palette, which by the way, is this one. <laughs> It's important that you recognize which portions, if there are specific portions of the Anastasia palette that you're excited about because they could be accomplished in a smaller format. So that is not to say that, you know, I think that this is some kind of derivative idea. I think it's really cool actually that it is this all in one color story that has these like micro color stories to it because it helps you decide how you're going to navigate it when you're 
putting an eye look together. It just doesn't mean that you can't like cross over between the color stories at all. It just helps you understand what's gonna be more complementary and what's going to be like more integrated. So like what's gonna contrast, but go with it. And then what's going to kind of like blend together and just sort of like rich in what's already there. So because I know already that I'm gonna get carried away and that this is going to end up being beautiful, beautiful mud, I'm going to start in my safe zone. And my safe zone is this shade Ashes right here. It is just the most, <laughs> I mean, good grief. It is, it's the color of Ashes and it's just this perfect gray taupe. It's so pretty. And I don't know whether, you know, they stick to the same formula every single time or whatever, but like, this just feels like an especially luxurious velvety matte formula that's in this palette. Okay, I am feeling a distinct difference with that primer on, just in the grip. Now, that doesn't mean that these are non-committal when I do apply them without a primer. They actually spread so evenly and beautifully. It's actually the opposite. Like, I feel like I have to apply a little more product because the primer is kind of want to absorb it a little bit, which is fine. I just have to kind of adjust my tactics here, but I can, I can highly recommend using a primer. I think it's going to make a huge difference with this formula so that you don't end up just being really annoyed by how all of your work, like half of it is kind of like ending up underneath your eyes. But I do recommend like shaking your brush off or tapping your brush off, but look, at how evenly that goes on. Like, I'm just like, oh my gosh, that color. And I'm not saying that like, that's a color that everyone would swoon over. It's specifically like really ideal for my coloring, like my undertones, brown eyes, you know, being able to use it straight from the pan. There's just something really, really like relaxing about that. It's very fun. And I was gonna, like I was kind of musing on this last night as I was falling asleep. I was like, but is it, easy and fun because those are my measuring tools, right? With a primer, it's easy. It is fun. It's definitely fun because the look that I get from it is just so rewarding, but it becomes very easy, especially with that primer. That primer is super sticky. I like that a lot. Yeah, that's the Kaleidos Tone Activator. Big fan, big fan of that. Next. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go into Rose Quartz because I love it so much. And this will actually be a very good test of that primer because I, had, I don't have a lot of shadow on my lids right now. And Rose Quartz is the toughest shade to, sorry. My camera cut me off and I went one step without knowing it. So what I was saying is that Rose Quartz in this palette is actually the hardest one to get it to stick, but I feel like it's so worth it because it really looks like Charlotte Tilbury Oyster Pearl, but in powder form, that's all. And I was a little nervous that it wasn't going to stick because it's been the one that's most prone to fallout, but lo and behold, <laughs> this is really coming through. So I laid it down with a BK203 because it's a flat brush. And my biggest recommendation for using pretty much anything in this palette is to tap so lightly. Just like when you're picking something up, it's the opposite of a Hindash palette. For like Hindash's pigments, they're pretty low pigment because they're meant to be used all over the face and they have no fallout. You can just scrunge your brush down at scrunge. If that's a word, I hope it doesn't mean something vulgar, but it's onomatopoetic. Like I feel like you scrunge your brush. Either way, you can rub your brush around in his stuff and just pick up as much as you possibly can. And it's not going to like fall out on your skin. This is like super crumbly and brittle. It's like, you know, the equivalent of like a streusel topping. <laughs> you know? That's how I would describe it. And so I feel like the texture is worth it that you get on your skin to be like, that tender with it, but be tender with it or it's gonna drive you nuts. Okay, I'm going to grab a smaller brush here and use rose quartz underneath my eye. Even though it's such a fair color, look how much impact laying the tiniest bit of that shade has on my skin. You're probably looking at this, especially if you, 
I don't know, have any kind of fear of looking sick when you're putting on eyeshadow. You know, my mother's very, very wary of that. She's like, everything turns red on me and I don't, I, I always just look like I've been sneezing and I'm sick. The thing <laughs> that I like about this palette is that it kind of leans into that, okay? And I don't think that I'm crazy. I think that there is kind of a, like the, a lot of times there's like, you know, drawing in the, the contours under your eyes to give yourself kind of that like under eye bag thing or whatever. There are these aesthetics that I feel like have a negative connotation that, you know, people tend to lean into because it's kind of a cool effect on certain people just, you know, based on like what you can achieve with it, using it, not being afraid of it. It's like when somebody uses the, you know, a negative connotation around like, oh, that looks like a bruise. It's like, okay, but a bruise is like basically just naturally occurring colors in your skin. So yeah, it's muddy and it looks like kind of a mess, but at the same time, like, throw on eyeliner or mascara and it could look kind of awesome. Not to say that anybody should go and get bruised on purpose. I'm just saying like makeup that's in bruised tones, those are still kind of skin native tones in a lot of ways. And so some of these things that have negative connotations, like I do tend to like lean into them. Less so on the like red demon eyes, which my eyes turn kind of like demon red if I have like the wrong blue or the wrong green on my on my eyes in eyeshadow form. Even something like Hannah Louise Poston talking about how she likes things to look like worn in and grungy and like her mascara to look like it's been worn all day or eyeliner to look like it's been worn all day. Like these are things that we like about the way that we end up looking by accident sometimes and I think that that's kind of the the beauty of being an individual is you kind of get to decide what you want to you know recreate that you've noticed about yourself and for me it's like I kind of dig the like I've been up too long <laughs> like you know <laughs> or not necessarily sick but like super sleepy you know, bedroom eyes kind of thing. I don't know, it's just, it's kind of a vibe for me. So I get that that's what this color is. I get it, I see it, but I like it. <laughs> okay, another thing that I think is really cool and unique about this palette is that with the exception of each of these very fragile, almost like, you know, expensive indie eyeshadow singles kind of textures, all the other shadows, their formulas don't have so much sparkle in them that I feel like they're distracting in the crease. So like even the shade element right here doesn't even look like it's going to be that dark, but it's just this side of being like a foily satin and it works beautifully on the outer corner and in the crease, especially with this color story. And it does have that little bit of like that whimpery red in it that's going to make my eyes look a little bit sick in the best way, okay? <laughs> I like it. What it does is it gives 90s. And I think that that's what this is supposed to do. It's like this grunge fantasy, right? And it's kind of like trying different flavors in a new context when you kind of shift your perception of like what the look is that you're going for instead of like necessarily it being pretty, you're kind of achieving something totally different. It might change what you think looks good on you. Do you know what I mean? And I think that that's what excites me about this palette is as I used it, I used the colors that I thought looked familiar to me, but the look that resulted from it was something that surprised me in what I liked on my face. So again, this is the shade Element. And you can see like, even though that's not a matte, you can see the light shift on it, but it's still a really nice, believable texture that doesn't reflect too much light in the crease. So I'm gonna leave that there. I'm gonna blend it with a bigger brush in a minute, but I don't know. I don't want to get demonetized for saying this, but it's kind of giving 90s heroin chic, right? Like that, just the sunken eyes kind of thing. And I think that it's an exaggeration to call that a fantasy. <laughs> it should not be anyone's fantasy, but it was a moment in time from whence it originated is less relevant than the mark that it made in fashion. It's important to understand your reference points, but there's also a point at which something just kind of exists as its own thing. And I think that the heroin chic aesthetic exists as its own thing at this point. And maybe it's just so gloomy outside that I'm leaning into it today. <laughs> Don't do drugs. <laughs> Don't 
do drugs. Okay, it's a little uneven and that's fine. So there's nothing particularly bright and matte in here, which is totally fine with me because I just don't feel like this is what's intended to be like a, a super basic palette, you know? There's something about this that's very artistic. It's really inviting, but it's not Too Faced Chocolate Bar, you know? So I'm gonna take Ashes again which was the first shade that I worked with. And I'm gonna use that to just blend this out, make sure everything looks seamless to some extent. And honestly, I don't even need to take anything on my brush. I can just use the brush because these are so soft. Sometimes I forget how soft they are. They'll almost blend away. And so, especially with that primer, I feel emboldened to just keep working it like that and get the shape that I want. Soft, soft, soft. It really lends itself to just like this super soft, blended, blown out kind of thing. And it's a little bit, not quite as murky over here. I need a little more depth. Adding element again. By the way, y'all, I am going to be reviewing the new Aether palette. She accidentally sent the PR to my old address. That's just really something, isn't it? So like, I feel perfectly happy leaving it like that, but I want to show y'all some of the like sparkle that can be had in this palette. And the sparkles, as y'all saw in the swatches, are in the greens and in the like the golds. So there's not like a lot of like bright purple or anything. Like the closest you get is royal. And it's more, I don't know, it's more of like a a satin with a tiny bit of glitter in it than it is like a true like unctuous you know textured shade and it's really about rose fire heavenly and haze so this is heavenly haze and rose fire and those are these just like completely lit up shades that you like honestly have to be careful with and then like the next mm, the next closest in terms of texture is like Nocturne right here and Nova. Nova is just ridiculous. In the interest of kind of still staying a little bit adjacent to what I already have going on and not going like, cause I feel like the green territory, I would want to go green to brown or purple to brown. Purple to green is a little hard for me, although that's not to say I won't, but I think I'm gonna go with Rose Fire. So this like bright copper kind of color, it reminds me quite a bit of the Charlotte Tilbury pop shot in, um, huh? Snoopy. 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 <laughs> okay, so um, reminds me a lot of Sunlit Diamond. So that top one is Rose Fire. No, <laughs> the top one is Sunlit Diamond and then the bottom one is Rose Fire. But they're really similar, honestly. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to grab one of my new brushes. This is the 210. And I'm actually also gonna wet this a little bit with some Fix Plus Magic Radiance. And I'm gonna dip that into Rose Fire because what I want to accomplish here is actually something a little bit like, I don't know, just like a little bit random. You know, I just kind of want it a little bit of everywhere. Not perfectly symmetrical but just enough that it's like, what is that, you know? And I definitely want it underneath. It works beautifully on a wet brush. Picks up nicely on the fingers too, but do you see how it like wants to move? That's why I don't have it powdered underneath my eyes yet. I would very much advise not powdering under your eyes. You're gonna wanna probably touch up after this because even if you don't get fallout, it's so, wants to blend. I don't know, you probably wanna have that, like the option to have that control. So I'm gonna take that same kind of damp brush and I'm gonna actually go into Noble right here, cause it's matte. Just kind of like really, really exaggerate the outer corner, the socket, even though it's a little warm. I feel like it obscures that well enough, you know? Ooh, it is warm. Cool. 
I did. I felt like in Nouveau, there were moments where I really had my hand tied behind my back. It's like they used up space in that palette with little gimmicks like that lavender that I understand was like the most exciting thing for a lot of people, but I've like literally never used it. It does not excite me. So I think I was more excited just about the fact that Anastasia had like put out a very different kind of palette than before, but I like this palette a lot more. So there is nothing except like remnant on this brush and I'm just going to blend that brown of Noble uh, and get a nice like blur of depth. Use an even bigger brush with nothing on it. Just to get the blur. I'm just grabbing rose fire on my finger and getting it really right into the top of the lashes so that like even when I put on mascara and stuff, you still see that pop. Other than that, I kind of want that to just be the vibe on the eyes. I'm gonna go with eyeliner and everything, but like, I don't wanna just doll it up. There's something about this where it's like, you want it to look kind of weird and sick, <laughs> but in this like really sexy way. <laughs> Okay, so let's go ahead and like clean up around my eyes and we'll go in with like blush and stuff like that. So I'm grabbing some of the Merit Complexion product and I'm just using it directly on a brush like that. Sort of rebuild, even if it's, like I said, even if it's not fallout, it's like kind of nice sometimes to just be able to go in and clean up without being afraid that there's like powder everywhere. And then I will powder underneath my eyes and still probably blow that look, lower lash line out a little bit more. So going in with my typical powder brush here, I have translucent fair and that's what I'm gonna start with, with the make powder, but I might go in with something even a little bit darker because I feel like the darker shade, like I said, does a better job of kind of camouflaging all of the discoloration like even I just had it wasn't like a full chemical peel but I got a facial where she you know kind of spot treated things with the chemical peel and it's making my skin really translucent in spots and it's just like purple gray <laughs> very much the color that I went for on my eyes you know just lean in right <laughs> lean into your natural assets a brush here and just yeah, blow that out. Now let's talk about blush, shall we? So Make Beauty <laughs> sent me all their new blushes. This is the Skin Mimetic Micro Suede Blush. I need to find the bronzer. I don't know where it went, but uh, their Micro Suede Bronzer is so awesome. And I'm just very, very impressed with this formula in general. Their powder formulas are just off the charts. They're exquisite. They do such a great job. So the only complaint that I have about this is that you don't know what shade you're looking at until you open it. Obviously I'm gonna be going for the ones that are a little bit less saturated, not just because that's what I typically go for, but also because this look is like really muddy. It's just like mud fantasy. It's giving mud fantasy. <laughs> Did you know that there was such a thing as a mud fantasy? Because now you do. Going in first with Celestial Rose. My hands look ridiculous. I went and got my nails done yesterday, by the way. I mean, they're fantastic. I'm obsessed with them. But <laughs> my nail tech, she was like, what is all over your hands? And I was like, I, she's like, it's makeup. I was like, yeah, it's swatches. And lately I've just been swatching things that, well, let's just say they're long wearing because they definitely stick around on my skin. Okay. We also need bronzer. And like I said, I don't know what I did with my Make bronzer. So I'm gonna grab my Patrick Ta because it's, you know, one of the easiest colors for me to wear. Just slam it on. And then we can make some decisions around pop of color and lips and whatnot. But I like that this is almost giving spooky. <laughs> I think New Moon might be the focal point. I'm just hoping I can get it on surely enough. I'm gonna take my 104 here, a little bit smaller brush. It's a lot like the Skin Mimetic Bronzer in the sense that you think it's gonna go on really harshly and it's a lot sheerer than it looks like it's gonna be in the pan. That is a blemish, that is not, that is not the makeup. I had a keratosis like right there. My skin is freaking out. It's freaking out in every direction. All right. In the interest of bringing this kind of 
the muddy thing, the mud fantasy. <laughs> Uh, in, in the interest of bringing this together, I'm going to do my eyeliner and my mascara and my brows and everything, but I want to go ahead and tell y'all what I'm gonna do. So the first thing that I'm going to do actually is use the Persona 24 hour waterproof eye pencil in bronze, which is actually kind of copper. And I'm gonna use that in my waterline because it goes really well with that kind of copper color on my eyes. And then I'll do regular like matte brown eyeliner and my regular brows and everything. But I feel like it really brings this look together. So let's go. shadow singles. I'm going to put a pin in that thought, but that was what I was musing on the entire time. I was just like putting the finishing touches on this eye look. I was just, all I could think was like, I'll get to that in a second. But this is the, the grunge fantasy today, the 90s grunge fantasy. And I know that 90s grunge would not be this collected, this precise, but that's why it's the fantasy in 2022. So I haven't put on my clear brow gel yet. I'm kind of waiting for everything to, to dry a little bit first. Um, and we need to decide on a lip, but my goodness, it's giving this like amazing worn in glam. It's very current feeling. And that's how I felt every time I've put a look on with this palette since I got it is just that everything about it feels very new and interesting and current and somehow effortless at the same time. All right, lips. IDK, do I have any, I have a bunch of new stuff because Kaja just sent me some of their lip products. So they have these love swipes. They sent me three of these. That wouldn't be bad. Let's see. They're like a liquid lip balm that's matte. So it's my way really of achieving the appearance of a blotted lip without having that like imperfection thing that drives me crazy. Like it's in and of itself the right texture and the right amount of saturation that I think that that actually really works. Yeah, that's also like driving home the, the 90s, the 90s fantasy, but it's really balmy feeling. I like that formula a lot. So this is the shade I'm melting, 05. All right, wow. Let's take a minute here and just briefly discuss the main things that I tried for the first time today. So we'll talk about the Merit concealer thing, the eyeshadow palette, the new blushes, and then this lip that I used. So Merit, the minimalist perfecting complexion foundation and concealer stick is $38. That puts it, you know, much less expensive than the Westman Atelier one, but it used to be like a crazy, like tiny amount of product. It's now 1.7 X the amount of product. So it used to be 3.7 grams and now it is 6.5 grams. Comes in 20 shades. Again, I got Silk, which is, I wanna say like the second lightest. Yes, bone is, bone is even lighter. Let's give this a spritz, but I want to use something that's not gonna be super dewy. I have here the Conceal and Define Infinite Mattifying Longwear Makeup Fixing Spray from Revolution Beauty. Has a little alcohol in it, I think. 
but it has a really nice smell. Water, yeah, it has denatured alcohol as like the second or third ingredient. So, you know, I don't use that kind of thing every day, but it is nice to set my makeup and get it to melt a little bit without, you know, necessarily getting a really dewy appearance because I don't always want a super dewy appearance. Medium coverage, natural finish, buildable lightweight complexion stick that can be used as a foundation or a concealer for easy natural looking coverage on the go. I am really not loving the appearance of that. I don't know. It's just kind of gathering. Like, I know I'm up against it right now. I'm in the trenches <laughs> on all of this, like, texture and dermatological issues I have going on. But, like, I've been using this and it's amazing. This is the Rare Beauty Positive Light Tinted Moisturizer. And I mean, it just like kind of evens everything out and it has the right amount of coverage and it doesn't, I feel like this looks worse. It looks like more noticeable. It looks like really bad acne and it's not. It's just kind of weird and textural, but like there are things that cover it better. And I also feel like even though I layered it up underneath my eyes, it's just not my favorite. Like I feel like the Westman Atelier stick accomplishes so much more and my skin doesn't eat it. I feel like my skin is eating this the way that it eats a cream blush. I don't know the science behind that, but I do. I just feel like it's not giving me a, an amount of coverage for what it is that I feel confident wearing. Like I would still want to put on blender cover or the Westman Atelier or something else. Let's talk about this eyeshadow palette. Oh, oh, I didn't realize it was a limited edition. It's $55, which is the same price as the other palettes. And it is obviously 12 shades. It says shimmer finish, matte finish, fragrance free, oil free, alcohol free, cruelty free. Featuring rich mattes and high reflect shimmers, Rose Metals palette delivers 12 all new shades dosed with ultra glam nostalgia and iconoclast confidence. And the ABH website, this is actually really interesting. It says, how to apply. Use light pressure when picking up product with a brush or fingertip. Pair with Magic Touch Concealer to prime and create an even smooth canvas. So they're saying the same thing that I did, where it's like, you know, use a very, very light touch. Don't pick up a ton of product at once, and it works really well with a primer. Use firm, dense brushes to deposit and deposit product and fluffy brushes to diffuse and blend, which is the way that I found success. Apply light shades to accentuate and highlight features. Apply medium shades to contour and transition color for a seamless finish. Apply deeper shades to define and line. That's eyeshadow 101. <laughs> Use a natural fiber brush to apply metallic shades. I don't have any natural fiber brushes, but I found that a wet brush worked pretty well. Pro tips, metallic shades can be applied with fingertips using gentle tapping motions. Apply matte shades first, then layer metallic shades to build dimension and pair metallic shades with dewy set setting spray for a foiled effect or a more intense finish. So like I did with the, you know, MAC uh, Magic Radiance. I do also have the dewy set. I literally forgot about that, but it's basically the same thing as Fix Plus. They say this is limited edition. I think it's just limited edition on Sephora. I think it's gonna be probably pretty permanent for like ABH. It's just the amount that they bought on Sephora. But I totally agree with everything that they said. And I think that it is worth the little bit of extra care that might be required putting this on because the look that you can achieve with it is just so cool. It's just so unique. Make beauty. You can't just type in make blushes. They'll be like, here's the recipe to make blush. They're $28. And I think they actually, I don't know when they come out, but um, it might be, they're like all on wait list right now. I'm not sure when they, when they drop. But uh, Skin Mimetic Micro Suede Blush, $28. This refillable, ooh, refillable. We love to see it. Neat. Oh yeah, of course. So you can just like pop this bad boy out. Oh, that's so neat. Wait, man, if you are just like a magnetic palette kind of person, <laughs> Just wait till they put the refills out. Ultra Smooth Micro Suede Blush adds the perfect flush of color to the complexion formulated with multifunctional sensory powders infused with hydrating hyaluronic acid and replenishing ceramides. This blush feels lightweight and silky smooth. So that's the advantage of their powders is that they are, you know, they call it skin mimetic. They do, in my experience, just go on smoother. I'm not sure what the like chemical reaction is that's happening. It's not like a pH thing, I don't think. It's not like changing color on my skin or something. It's just about the fact that even though it's a powder, it kind of warms to your skin and smooths itself out. And then I do, I wanna talk about this Kaja Love Swipe because I know they're not new, 
but this is new to me and I feel like it complemented the look really well. Comes in five shades, it's $21. A lightweight cushiony lip mousse infused with nourishing properties that deliver a velvety smooth color in every swipe. So yeah, I really, they feel like a liquid lip balm. Like they have that kind of funky slippy thing to them which is really nourishing feeling. And I actually almost prefer the matte finish to the shiny finish because it's just so seldom that I find this comfortable of a mat that's like this chill, you know? And they're all in these really cool, like fall kind of like muddy colors. So yeah, I think we're ready for final thoughts here on everything that was new to try. The Merit, you know, I'll be interested to try it different seasons in different seasons of my life, maybe, when I'm maybe looking for less coverage and my skin's in better shape, but at the moment, I don't think that I'd recommend it over my other favorite balm foundations. I still like the Westman Atelier. I still love the Monica Blender. I still really like Salt New York for exactly what it's intended for. I just don't think that this one is like a standout in a really good way because I don't, I just don't feel particularly confident in the way that it just like performs under duress, you know? Not even duress, just like unideal circumstances. This is unideal circumstances and it just kind of wets the bed a little bit. So not my favorite. The eyeshadow palette, let me just take a breath because I'm going to, I'm going to explain some things here. The reason that I said that this makes me think of why I don't buy single pan eyeshadows, like one at a time. First of all, they're really expensive. <laughs> I went on a uh, Cleona the other day and I was like, maybe I'll just, y'all, yeah. they're so expensive. It's like $25 a pan or something. And not that they don't deserve my money. I'm sure that they do, but here's, here's the thing. I look at this and I say, oh wow, you know, this is actually three quads and I own three quads that kind of do similar things to this, but would I have ever pulled them out and used them together in that way? Absolutely not. Would I, even if I had, then felt compelled to tell you to do that? Absolutely not. I want you to be able to pack you a lunch, okay? I want you to be able to have an easy time and not have to hack your makeup collection. And for that reason, it might be why I feel more comfortable owning more things, although I wouldn't call my collection comfortable, but even if I were like a normal, regular everyday makeup consumer and user, I still think that I would want to own this because there's something about the combination, not just each shadow and like the overall color. It's like the combination of these three color stories that go together in an unexpected way that just keeps me coming back to it. It keeps me dreaming about it. It's worth what would normally be a set of formulas that I would say is just too finicky. It's not Pat McGrath, you know what I mean? It doesn't put itself on for you. I wouldn't travel with it. I would not feel comfortable traveling with it because it's going to shatter. It's just very fragile. These shadows are just really, really delicate and you do have to be tender with how you use these formulas. But it's kind of like when you sit there and project about a team's ability to win based on their you know, previous performance and their credentials, you still play the game. And that's why you play the game. And that's why I got in the trenches and played the game today is because this has no business by all of its qualities broken apart on paper. It has no business knocking my socks off the way that it does, but it is greater than the sum of its parts in the actual looks that I can achieve from it. I can't stop using it. I can't stop playing with it. I can't stop applying it when I start. It's just something that stimulates my creativity and it gives me like a really strong creative response interacting with these colors. So yeah, you might not feel that way about it. I don't know. It's definitely like esoteric. I feel like that's very, it could be very personal, but I could see myself panning these. Like there, if there's just something about this palette that just immediately speaks to me. I also really like the packaging. I think it's really pretty the little corners and everything. It's still cardboard, but it just looks really nice. Either way, I fully understand if you're sitting there watching this going, huh? Like, what is she talking about? It's just an eyeshadow palette, you know? It's art supplies. And that 
makes me think differently the way that it was combined. It's a complete thought. It's such a composition. And I feel like even though the drawbacks, you know, make it so that it might be a little bit more challenging right when you get it to like, you know, approach the formulas, it all feels like it's for a reason. It doesn't feel like it's a mistake, you know? So that's how I feel about that. I am super glad that I got it. And before I do like a full breakdown between the two palettes, I genuinely wish that I had known that I would like this this much because I would have waited. The Nouveau palette doesn't even, doesn't even hold a candle. And I like the Nouveau palette. I do, I like it. I think it's really nice, but like this thing is just, it's kind of off the charts. I love it. I love it. These blushes, I feel like they really, once again, with Make Beauty, they just know what the heck they're doing from start to finish. It's not just the color. It's not just the formula. It's the fact that they chose to put out such a complete set where it's like there's these desaturated tones, there's these nuanced colors. There are colors that if you put one in front of me, closed it, opened the other one, I would say those are the same color, but then when you swatch them next to each other, you realize that they're not. They're nuanced, they're different, and it is, it's like as subtle as the difference between Divine Rose and Flirtatious from Pat McGrath. And like, to me, that speaks of color theory brilliance, okay? That's experience talking, and I really appreciate that about it. And they put out a whole other half of the collection, which is these beautiful, nuanced, gorgeous, but more saturated colors that will show up better on deeper skin. They came to the table fully equipped, okay? And they did the thing. And I just, I love that about Make Beauty because I feel like they are never making excuses. They're just like, look, we understand the assignment and we're going to get an A+, okay? Okay. The only thing that I don't totally love is that I can't tell what shade I'm looking at. I wish that like even maybe the sticker on the back or something was a different color. It would make it easier without having to open each one. But you know, ostensibly you're not going to own all of them like I do. You probably won't. And Pat McGrath is the same way. A lot of them are the same way. I got spoiled on the about face ones because they're all like this. They're all like, you know, the same color packaging as they are on the inside. And I understand that that's a, that's an expensive thing to do from a brand standpoint is to do something like that. So, I mean, I totally forgive that, but if that would drive you crazy, I just wanted to like give you a heads up there. But I feel like Make is, it's so funny because when I use their products, I go, I feel like if someone were to have allowed me to almost like have a bracket system of formulas and colors and things like that, and allow me however much time I needed to like, you know, have a tournament, I feel like these are the formulas that I would arrive at and the colors that I would arrive at. Their decisions are intuitive to me and all the way down to not being so pretentious that you can't depot their stuff. Because, you know, even Anastasia, they're, they're notorious for being impossible to depot. Would never depot this because not only are they stuck in there for good, she makes sure of that, but also these are so crumbly. I mean, you would completely destroy the palette trying to get them out. And that is one of my chief complaints about Anastasia palettes is that you can't pull the pans out. And if I could pull the pans out, do you know what I would do? Of course you do. I would put them in their respective quads because it's the first like type A in the weeds moment, like the most Virgo thing I've ever thought about doing. I just want to put them in their respective quads because that's how I think about them. I would put a purple, purple quad, a brown quad, and a green quad. I'm not going to stay on that for very long because I will start to really like work myself up about the fact that I can't do that because it would be very satisfying. So anyway, those are my feelings there. <laughs> a little, little khaki tangent. And then these, once again, man, Kaja has had this stuff around for so long. It's like, I remember being in the marketing space at my CEO being like, you can have a great idea all you want, but timing is everything. It's most often luck, right? But you have to arrive with your product offering at the right time. We're seeing that right now where it's like, sure, you know, Bunny from Graveyard Girl did a full series where she was very, very successful doing all of these like product tests and things like that on does this thing really work? And I loved watching those, but now it's all getting like rinsed and reused through TikTok. I mean, they're testing the exact same products, doing the exact same kinds of reactions and things like that. And I'm like, we already did this, but it's about timing and it's about the way that things kind of revolve, right? The way that the, the world turns as it were. So 
I understand that most of these things from Kaja have been around for a long time and maybe they had a moment right when they came out, but it's like, I feel like their moment has come back around. I feel like the moment for their bentos has come back around. The moment for this has come back around. All of their formulas feel so current to me, even though they've been around for a long time, which just speaks to them being a little too visionary. M Cosmetics is very similar where you use her stuff and you're like, huh, this is what I like now, but this came out like, you know, three years ago or something. There are, there are a few brands that are like that, but I think Kaja is like 100% saturated with those kinds of products where they've been sitting around just like waiting for us to like, catch up to them because this stuff is just, it's just great, you know? So I admit that I have slept on this brand for far too long and like, that's pretty. That's pretty. That's like one of my favorite matte lips that I've ever worn because it's so subtle that I feel like it doesn't steal from the rest of the look, but it's incredibly comfortable and it's not drying my lips out. So. Awesome. A plus there. So yeah, y'all, that's it. That's the one today. I dig this so much. This is very much like an ideal face of makeup for me. So I hope that y'all enjoyed watching me go through this journey. We will definitely be doing more looks with this palette. But if you want to see a full playlist of all of my chatty get ready with me type trying new makeup videos, they're often like this. A lot of times I even take questions off of my Instagram, then check out the playlist right here. Like, comment, and subscribe. I love y'all so much and I will see you in the next one.